How is everyone doing? I'm Mini FC. This is Blue Line CV. And welcome to the match review of our 2 0 win over Spurs. We were the better team by far today. There's no debating that. We played Spurs four times now. And out of those four games, we've been the best team uh, in three games. So, you know, Sarri just doesn't make the same tactical mistakes against the same team twice. So he's learned from those mistakes. And we, were, we just outplayed Spurs, we outfought Spurs. We were fitter, we were smarter, we were quicker. It was just a very good performance. But you guys, before I get into anything, today's video was brought to you by the One Football app. People keep telling me just how convenient the app is. I've been very selective with the companies I've worked with. I want to, you know, work alongside companies that actually offer people something good and worthwhile. And I think that you guys definitely get that with the One Football app. Just convenient. I mean, you know, today I know the lineup instantly because I get a notification from the app. I get up to date scores, match facts. Everything I need to head around the club or players I do support. If you guys want to help me out in the link in the description below, it's going to be a link to the One Football app. I'd appreciate if you took the time to download that because it does help me out. But getting straight back into the match review, I'm going to be focusing on the lineup, Sari and his plan B. Sari's shown that he can adapt, and some of the performances we're seeing from some of the players now. But sign with the lineup, and you know, I'm not going to lie, I was quite worried. You know, I saw Marcus Alonso. Back in the team, I was like, huh? This is a massive game for you, Sari. You know, your job is potentially on the line if you mess up. Marcus Alonso has been awful, especially when he hasn't played the past two games on top of that as well. Could he really come back against a team like Spurs? He really just destroyed him last time he played against them. But I have to say off from the bat, this was Alonso's best defensive performance tonight for us. Now, of course, offensively, you know, different story. But just from the defensive aspect, it was his best game for us this season. I mean, he was just on point. He, he was mentally aware. His positional sense was good. He was very strong in the 50-50. And he won most of the balls he challenged for. It was a good defensive performance. Of course, you know, talking about the lineup some more. It was disappointing not to see hudson Adoy or Ruben playing. Especially when they provided a nice spark for us in the second half against Man City. I was disappointed not to see that. But, you know, we have to have faith in Sari. I'm always saying believe in the process. I'm going to touch on this point in even more detail later on in this match with you. But Sari had a game plan tonight. And it makes a lot of sense when you are uh, in hindsight, you know. Sari's thinking we can't afford to lose this game. That's his first worry. So he introduces Alonso back into the team because physically, you know, he's strong. Uh, he's tall and he is decent in the air. You're playing against a Spurs team that have that aerial presence. A Spurs team that are very strong themselves, probably stronger than us man for man. So if you're going to play a game where you're not going to be too adventurous, where you're not going to press too crazy high, where you're going to mostly stay around the halfway line and soak up pressure, you know, Marcus Alonso does make sense. And, you know, just looking at the lineup, the work that our midfield players put in today was exceptional. I thought Kova, Jorginho and Kante ran their socks off. They got back in position. They pressed. They won 50-50s. They were aggressive. It was an incredible performance by all of them. They really fought and they really battled hard. And those performances fell in nicely with Sarri's game plan, which was to, you know, stay in the game for the first 60 minutes and then reassess things around that point. And then I'm sure we would have seen guys like, you know, Willie and Hudson Adoy and Ruben coming on regardless. But he wanted to play it a bit safer tonight. So, you know, so he doesn't lose his job. Let's be serious, you know. There was so much pressure on Sari running in this game. You know, beforehand with this whole Kepa incident on top of that as well. Oh, Kepa, I wish I spoke about that even in, in more detail. Sari made the right call, in my opinion. Kepa couldn't play today. Just thinking about what Kepa did against Man City, he was incredibly selfish. It's oh, like ridiculously selfish. I mean, it's obvious that Caballero was going to be a tactical decision. You know, Caballero has played against Man City. I'm sure that they face each other in the training sessions when it's come to penalty shootouts so many times before. And it's like, you know, Man City players would have been a bit more nervous taking their penalties, especially the penalty takers that aren't that good in the first place, knowing that Caballero has an idea of, you know, where they might place their penalties. So, you know, there's a reason too why Sarri waiting until the, right at the end to use his fourth substitute. So Kepa really messed things up and really played for himself. So in that sense, for him to even just get one week's fine, and to miss that on one game isn't good enough. And I think really Sarri shouldn't use him for the next few games to really teach him a lesson. But getting back to the point, you know, we started this game with intensity. And I'm sure Sarri's going to be very pleased with how the team played. Sarri's always been questioning their mentality. 
You know, how many times, you know, things don't go in our favour does this team crumble? But today, we saw the application in every single player. The same application that we saw against Man City. You know, the players fought hard, they worked hard, they got back in position. Uh, defensively very strong and solid. I and mean, when you're seeing Eden Hazard putting in a real shift recently, you know that all the players' mentality is on point. And that's something that Sarri is going to want to see. You know, against Spurs today, we won our 50-50s. We were stronger than them. We were quicker than them as well. We were the better team against them. And it's no surprise that we dominated like this during the first 50 minutes. The intensity in our play was great to see. And the game plan was to obviously play a lot of quick, direct balls uh, behind Spurs' fullbacks. Because that way, you know, once you've got Hazard receiving the ball there, for example, we're going to be able to control the game in their half. And that's the type of game we really want to play deep down. We created the space out wide for those balls to be played in. And we were able to play very directly out wide by some very simple movements. You know, the wingers would drop deeper. Uh, they'd take out the Spurs players that are marking them. Then you'd have either Kova or Kante pushing out wide in behind them. And that way, we were able to play a lot of direct balls in behind. And, you know, Spurs are really struggling at times. And it's unlucky that we didn't get a goal uh, for our efforts during that stage of the game. Iguain was very unlucky to hit the post like that. Great finish. And it's good to see that he's got the confidence in front of goal. If we could create a few more chances for him, I think that he is going to get goals. You know, let's be serious. The opportunities that he's getting are very hard to take. So the fact that he's hitting all these efforts on target really shows you the quality of the player. And when you have Iguain up front, yes, he didn't score today, but it's this movement that really helps the team a lot because he makes very intelligent diagonal runs to the near post and the far post. And when you're doing that against these very compact defensive lines, that's what you do to help stretch them and break them. And of course, on top of that, it really helps out all the play out wide. Still, moving on to the second half, and that's when things stepped up. Pedro, my God, I don't know what happened to him all of a sudden, but that Barca Pedro that we've been missing for a long time this season, a long, long time, came out from nowhere. Now, let's be serious. First half, he was kind of dead. He wasn't that great. He was losing the ball quite sloppily. Wasn't really doing anything from an offensive point of view. That one piece of genius, incredible play by him. To keep that low center of gravity, the first touch, that composure on top of that, to hit the ball, you know, between Larissa's legs. That was a top-class goal. That was the difference we needed. And when we score first, we tend to have the advantage in the game. That's what we need. Pedro came out from nowhere and on top. My God, that piece of play by him. I, I wish I could use clips in these match reviews. He just turned into like Super Saiyan Pedro all of a sudden. I don't know what happened. 10 out of 10, slide tackle from nowhere. Inch perfect slide tackle. Then that little chop skill as well. And then you know to like run past three, four players and before playing the pass. Great performance. And he really stepped things up a lot. And maybe he's thinking, you know, Hudson Adoy is going to take my spot soon. You know, this kid is really hot on my heels right now. I don't know if it's a case of stepping up, but I think that in that moment, you know, luck favoured Pedro, and that's great to see. And the great thing about scoring the first goal during that time was that Spurs didn't really have a game plan uh, to counter that. Now, their game plan, you know, normally teams weren't sick with their plan A. Their plan B wasn't that effective, you know. When you saw Lorente coming on to partner Kane, and then Kane and Lorente are going man v man against Rudiger and, and uh, Davo Luiz, it really sums up everything you need to know about how Spurs were today, you know. They were just really poor, really poor today. And I think Rudiger and Luiz, you know, these past two games being incredible defensive performances from them. I've always been stressing that, you know, even though, yes, Rudiger, sometimes his positional sense can be a bit iffy. And we know that both defenders aren't the greatest pushing out wide to defend. But let's be serious. How many defenders have to push out wide are really winning their 50-50s? I mean, look at Vincent Kompany against uh, Eden Hazard time and time again. Yeah, he, he wasn't winning the ball. Same thing with Laporte. Same thing today with Alderweireld. I mean, it's much harder. Let's be serious. But I'm not going to see their fan bases really criticising their players. So that's food for thought. But this is going to sum up some of my final few points in regards to Sari. You know, showing that he can adapt. Now, it's obvious that sari has been quite stubborn in the sense that he's really been trying to force through his plan A. Trying to get Sari ball to work. But it seems like with the pressures of potentially losing his job soon... He's realised, you know, what's more important? You know, staying here and, you know, living to fight another day to get my system working. Or really just being so, like, ridiculously stubborn that I'm going to live by the sword and die by it. Sari obviously taught the smarter approach because he is a very, you know, he's a very objective, smart guy. From all the interviews I read about him and things that players say about him. So, 
That's what I mean. Sometimes when you're facing the heat and in a very pressurized situation, you're not gonna be thinking clearly. But basically, one of the main things that Sari realized was that, you know, me playing this style of football, we constantly keep getting counter-attacked down the flanks. Teams keep scoring against us when it comes to the transition. And Sari just realized, you know what? I need to make sure my fullbacks have more protection, basically. And this is why the defensive line pushes back a bit more. This is why our entire midfield is playing with more discipline. You know, a lot of times you see that we have a flat midfield three right now. And that's great because that means that we can have each midfield player man marking an opposition midfield player. And this way we can keep our shape in the middle. You know, we do become a 4-5-1 off the ball. And it does make it very hard for teams to play through us. And Spurs today, just the same as Man City a few days ago, couldn't get between the lines, couldn't do anything centrally. And of course, you know, when you stop teams like that, having the fun in those spaces, you're halfway to winning the battle. We know that Alonso and Aspi aren't amazing offensively. Even today, we saw so many poor moments of play from both players forward. But defensively, when they have that support beside them, you know, they do get that confidence where they can get a bit tighter knowing that, you know, their lack of pace isn't going to affect them. You know, Sari's realised that this is why we're seeing the wingers being even more disciplined, which is good to see. A lot of times this season, our wingers haven't really been working as hard, but they seem to have really fixed up these past few weeks and they've really been putting in a shift. I mean, Eden Hazard's work rate has been exceptional these past few games. And it's good to see that William and Pedro are working hard even if the end product at times isn't always on point. But still, you know, hopefully people aren't gonna question whether Sari is just a one-trick pony. I mean, again, this was the second successive defensive masterclass from this team where we really stifled the opposition from doing anything whatsoever. Both teams, City and Spurs tonight, barely created any shots against us, and most of the opportunities are very speculative efforts. So it really grows to show that Sari is a top class manager, he is. But anyway, you guys, I just wanna praise Kante and cover very quickly. Of course, I've been praising our midfield already this review, but you know, I'm looking at Kante and it seems like he's stepped up even more. And I think that with him being able to be a bit deeper at times where, you know, he's been given the role where he can be the most advanced midfield player. This is why we're seeing a much better Kante. Now, if you guys remember during a lot of the times this season, normally it's our number eight that leaves his position to help support our striker. Now, we do become a 4-4-2 team temporarily, and normally it would be Kante sitting deeper, but, you know, these past few weeks, Sari has changed things. Kante is now that guy that does lead the press and help support things, and I think that is just smart tweaking, and, you know, I've been saying that Sari needs to make some of these smart tactical adjustments to really fine-tune the team, and I think that with how he's fine-tuned Kante ever so slightly, it's, it's getting the best out of Kante. And because Kante is playing even better now, it's helping the team perform even more because now everyone's getting that support they need. And structurally, we're looking even more solid. But anyway, you guys, of course, you know, shout out to, to Kieran Trippier for that ridiculous on goal. But again, it was a lack of communication between both him and Lloris. But again, that's a little bit of luck we needed. Sorry, sorry, man, I think you've saved your job. You're gonna live to fight another day. That's great to see. And something just told me that there's no way our project under Sorry can just end so quickly. It hasn't even started yet. There's no way he can finish like this. And it looks like he has passed his test. Hopefully the board are gonna support him now and believe in his goddamn vision. That's what we need now. Anyway, you guys, that's gonna bring an end for today's match. If you please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Iron CV. This is why we keep believing in the process.